thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity of coming to the masjid for our Jummah Salah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making us Muslim. Islam is a religion of purity and purity is something that we have to observe at all different levels in our lives. Our environments as Muslims must be an environment which is clean. That's why you go to many Muslim homes, you're asked to remove your shoes before you enter because anywhere in a Muslim's home you can perform your salah. The clothing that you wear is supposed to be clean. There are impurities such as urine and excrement and blood and so on. If they get on your clothing, it makes your salah invalid. The Muslim is aware of the saliva of the tongue of the dog, that it's an impurity. If it gets on your clothing, you can't pray. Any impurity about the size of a dirham, the middle of the palm of your finger gets on your clothing, you can't pray without, without clothing. We pray five times every day, so we ensure our clothing is clean. The Muslim is one who ensures that his body is clean. To perform prayer and to read the Quran, he must have wudu. Sometimes for major impurity, he needs to take a ghusl and bath. So everything around him is about cleanliness. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith that Tuhuru shatrul iman that cleanliness and purity it is half of the faith and this refers not just to the physical purity according to the muhaddithin but it includes spiritual purity as well. So we ensure that our thoughts are pure. We ensure that what we say is pure. That we do not backbite, slander, lie, use obscene language, that we do not have ill feelings for each other, harboring jealousy and anger in our minds. It's part of purity. It's part of purity as well that we do not have that concept of shirk and associating partners with Allah because that is a form of impurity as well. So we are pure in all levels and even what we consume must be pure and must be halal. And that is why Allah says, O mankind, eat from the earth that which is pure, halal and tayyibah, that which is halal and permissible and that which is pure. And do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. He is for you an open enemy. Because there are two very important aspects of the food that we eat. One is that the food nourishes our body. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, that that flesh which is nourished with haram it is more befitting for the fire of Jahannam that flesh of our bodies which is nourished with haram it is more befitting for hell fire if we eat a piece of steak piece of beef for example most of this is protein we cook it we chew it we swallow it it goes into our stomach and our small intestines it is digested and broken down into amino acids. These amino acids go into the blood, they go to the liver. Some of it becomes deaminated and forms urea, goes in back into the blood to the kidneys to be excreted as urine. The rest of these amino acids go into the blood and they go to all of our cells. And in the cells, through a process of protein synthesis, these amino acids are built up again into proteins that form our muscles, our skin, our nails, even our blood, our hair. So the animal protein that we eat, the beef that we eat, has now become human protein. It's now in our hair. It's now in our nails. It's now in our muscles. It's in our blood now, that same protein. Broken down to amino acids, built back up into protein again by the body. And therefore, it nourishes us. We grow from it. And the second important thing about food is that food causes us to act in a particular way. When we eat certain kinds of food, we react in certain kinds of ways. People who eat meat more tend to behave more aggressively than those who eat vegetables more and so on and so forth. There are expressions that indicate your behavior is like a particular animal. Perhaps because when we eat a lot of that kind of meat, we behave like that. The second reason, therefore, the Messenger says, Allah says, 
Ya ayyuhar rasul O messengers Kulu minat tayyibat Eat that which is good and pure Wa'amalu saliha And do good deeds The eating of halal Encourages us to do good actions Which we have to do as Muslims And the eating of haram Discourages us from doing good And therefore It is very important for us as Muslims To ensure that all that we eat is halal Halal in food is a very broad term Many plants and animal Many plants and vegetables Fruits and vegetables by their very nature are halal Some plants by their nature Are not halal They are haram like the marijuana plant We cannot use it, it is haram Other plants and other vegetables and fruits They are changed from halal to haram sources Haram things The poppy is halal When it's changed into opium and morphine And heroin It is haram Except if the morphine is used legally Fruits and vegetables They are halal When it's fermented into alcohol It becomes haram The alcohol, the wine, it is haram Some things are just totally haram for us They can never be made halal Like the meat of the pig The swine The meat of the dog The meat of the domesticated cat These are all haram We can never make them halal And then there are some other animals which are halal in nature but they become permissible to consume when halal slaughtering is done. The, when the process of the biha is done. And the biha is that process of Islamic slaughtering which has certain principles. One principle that a sharp knife or a sharp instrument is used causing the blood to flow. Another principle is used that there are four vessels The jugular veins, the carotid artery, the esophagus and the windpipe The majority must be cut, at least three of them Three is the majority of the four And that the name of Allah is mentioned The Prophet says مَا أَنْهَرَ دَمَ وَذُكِرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ فَكُلْ Whatever causes the blood to flow, to gush forth In other words, it will be a sharp knife And in other words, it would have cut the majority of vessels Because cutting the jugular vein alone or cutting one vessel Will not cause the blood to flow out properly Whatever causes the blood to flow And it has Allah's name mentioned upon it Then it is halal and it is permissible And in the books of fiqh This mentioning of Allah's name Is very important for the biha, for Islamic slaughter. There are two kinds of Islamic slaughter: adhabul ikhtiari and adhabul iltirari. Ikhtiari refers to when an animal is under your control, and therefore you have to slaughter it in this method I just described. Iltirari is when an animal is not in your control, like you are hunting, and then you are allowed to shoot a spear or an arrow, or send a dog or a falcon towards it. Even then, you call the name of Allah at the time when you release the dog or you send the falcon or you throw the arrow. Even then you say the name of Allah. But when it is, it is, when it is ikhtiyari, when it is animals under your control, birds in a cage, you can't look at a, bird in a, a chicken in a cage and throw a spear at it. You have to slaughter it in the prescribed manner. And even then, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be called. The name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be called In the dhib, at the time of slaughter And the one who has to call the name of Allah is the slaughterer Halal cannot be that you go to a chicken depot where a non-Muslim is doing the slaughter You stand up over the counter and you say Bismillah Allahu Akbar and he slaughters the animal Is that halal? That is not halal Halal cannot be that you have a goat in your yard And you say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, you come to the masjid for Dhuhr Salah And after you go back home, you cut the neck without saying anything That is not halal Halal is that the person who is doing the slaughter He says, Bismillah, at least Or he says, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar Calling the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Halal is not a person saying, Bismillah And then he says, John, bring me that 
sharp enough as a knife. And then he cuts the truth. That is not halal. He has called the name of John after he has called the name of Allah. So that halal is clear. The rules of halal are clear. And Allah says, فَكُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكِرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ بِآيَاتِهِ مُؤْمِنِينَ so eat of that upon which the name of Allah has been invoked if you do believe in his verses. Eat upon that which the name of Allah has been invoked. So there was an incident in the time of the Prophet wasallam, which is very similar to what is going on now in the halal industry in Trinidad and Tobago. Where the Quraysh came to the Prophet wasallam, and they came to the, to, the, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself and they started to say to him why is it that you are eating that which you call the name of Allah but you do not eat that which Allah has killed himself why is it that? why is it you are, you are saying it is halal and permissible to eat that which Allah has slaughtered that which you have slaughtered in the name of Allah but that which Allah has slaughtered, you don't eat it. So what has Allah slaughtered? Those animals that have died naturally. And the laws have come about those animals are mita. That which is die, has died through a blow or it has been you know, knocked down or it has died naturally is mita. We cannot consume it. So then verses were revealed. Verses were revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Walla ta'kulu. After the verses were mentioned, these verses came at the end of this section. Walla ta'kulu mimma lam yudhkirasmullah alayhi. Do not eat and do not eat that over which the name of Allah has not been pronounced. Do not eat that over which the name of Allah has not been pronounced. There is a, a ruling in the fiqh that if a Muslim is going to say Bismillah and he forgets that and he doesn't say anything, that chicken is halal. That is halal. He, right? So this ruling here what Allah says, do not eat over that which the name of Allah has not been pronounced is when he deliberately doesn't say it. He doesn't say it. And Allah addresses further, وَإِنَّهُ لَفِسْقٍ And that this is transgression. This is sin. This is inequity. If it is that you eat deliberately that which the name of Allah has deliberately not pronounced, then you are a sinner. And there are now, there are now, there is a particular company now that is bringing meat into the country there are many people, many companies bringing meat into this country which are mechanically slaughtered, machine slaughtered and they are saying it is halal. Many companies, many importers and they are saying that they are halal but it is not halal simply because the name of Allah is not called on them deliberately. Simply because if you tell these people, because one of these companies that I personally have spoken to has told us that they have a conveyor line in which 23,000 birds are slaughtered per hour. And they have a Muslim saying Bismillah. Which Muslim can say Bismillah 23,000 times an hour? Which Muslim? can say that and say it continuously and therefore these people believe and they have a right to their belief that this is still halal once bismillah is being pronounced and so on as the birds are passing by they are saying bismillah but our scholars have said from this one ayah of the quran fakulu mimma dhukira smullahi alayhi that only, that meat only upon which the name of Allah has been pronounced. And when the confusion came, Allah said, La ta'akulu, do not eat that over which the name of Allah has not been pronounced. This is sin. 
This is a sin. And what does Allah say after? وَإِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ لَيُوحُونَ إِلَىٰ أَوْلِيَائِهِمْ And that the Satans, the Shayateen, amongst the Jannats and amongst human beings as well, the Shayateen, they inspire their awliya, their friends, لِيُجَادِلُكُمْ to argue with you, to dispute with you. You say to them, Bai, this is not halal, Allah's name has not been pronounced on it. They say, yes, it's halal, do worry, man. It is halal. They will argue with you, it is halal. They will say, modern technology, we can't, too many people to feed, we cannot do this hand slaughter. Too many people. Islam is not in the backward time, Islam is in the modern age. Then why did not Allah add some verses to these and say perhaps except when we have machines to slaughter now? Why didn't something happen like that? Why did these verses come and all of the mufassirin interpreted to mean do not eat that which the name of Allah has not been called? So Allah says, and this of course is in reference to those people of the Quraysh, who came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who came to the companions and tried to confuse them and tell them, you're eating what you are slaughtering in the name of Allah, but you're not eating what Allah is slaughtering Himself. And then the verses came telling them that Allah has already made it clear to you what is halal and what is haram. And that there are people who will try to fool you and Allah now says as well, and the Satans inspire their friends to dispute with you. And then Allah says, وَإِنْ أَتَعْتُمُوهُمْ And if it is that you were to obey them, إِنَّكُمْ لَمُشْرِكُونَ Then you would become mushrik. Then you would become pagans. Then you would become those who associate partners with Allah. Why? You have denied the laws of Allah and you are listening to the laws of other than Allah. Allah is saying, don't eat that which is not slaughtered. The name of Allah has not, been, has not been called in its slaughter. But you are saying, but they say it halal, it must be halal. They say it is halal. We don't even know who they are. But our desires overwhelm us so much that we forget about everything. Why such a pertinent verse of the Holy Quran has come to us to remind us that if the name of Allah has not been called upon it, do not eat it, it is not halal. And there is a hadith, my brothers and the sisters, just in case we say, but this must be halal. It must be halal because so-and-so, we don't know who exactly, but so-and-so is saying it is halal. And it must, it must be halal. But then, isn't there some doubt? If it is that the Quran is saying this, and we know from the facts that we have been given, by the companies, by the people themselves, they can't hide it. There's video of it, that the amount of birds that are passing on these lines are so many that these birds, not every one of them, less than 5% of them will get the name of Allah being called upon them. 23,000 birds, even if you bring it down to 2,000 birds an hour. Who can say Bismillah 2,000 times, hour after hour? So there is doubt. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadith narrated by Abu Abdullah al-Nu'man ibn Bashir in al-halala bayinun famous hadith that the halal and the permissible it is clear wa in al-harama bayinun and the haram and impermissible it is clear wa bainahuma umurun mushtabihatun and between both of them there are matters that are doubtful La ya'lamuna, la ya'lamuhunna, kathirun min nas Most of the people do not know about them. These are the doubtful matters. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, For whosoever avoids the doubtful matter, then he certainly declares his deen and his honor. Who avoids the doubtful matters, then he protects his deen and his honor. Wa ma waqa'a fi shubuhat. And whosoever he falls into the doubtful waqa'a fil haram, then he falls into the haram. 
Whoever falls into the doubtful, he falls into the haram. And therefore, if there is a doubt that this kind of bird, this kind of meat, it is haram, if there is a doubt that it is, ha that it is not halal, then we have to stay away from it to protect our deen. Because what we eat, it will become what we are. And what we eat will affect what we do. Um.